What are the most asked questions? And I know from my perspective, dealing with most of the federal government and that type of customers, I get some specific questions. And Tom, I know in your world, you get a lot of other questions with the detention market and some things like that. So from my perspective, Jeff, one of the questions I could get just about at every one of the meetings that I have when, we, when we're talking about perimeter protection is what's the difference between our sensor and the sensors that use a fiber optic cable as the, the, the material that's on the fence. We use that special ca uh, cable that kind of reminds me of a coax in a way, um, but w what's the difference between our system which uses that, that coax-like cable and a fiber sensor type cable? Uh, the difference, obviously, the different types of cables, um, the advantage that the MicroPoint cable brings is a significantly higher resolution. Um, we can detect and determine an event to within 1.1 meters of a disturbance on, on a fence line where more expensive and all stress more expensive fiber systems have a resolution that's about 10 meters and it's not always repeatable. So you get about 10 times the resolution. The other thing, Steve, I know that gets asked of you a lot is, is uh, protection from lightning type events. That, that, that's a, a, a common myth, and I would call it, out there in the industry that because it, ours is coax that we have lightning problems or things get destroyed from lightning. And the reality is uh, it's not an issue it's, it, it's, it's not a big problem. We don't have a lot of lightning destroyed products coming back to us. And the reason is, is our system is designed with some inherent protection, surge protection within the units, um, but we operate on what they call a floating ground principle. The fence should be grounded. Our, our uh, processors are spaced about a quarter of a mile of apart. Um, and that the fence should be grounded multiple times between them if they're installed correctly. And we all know electricity takes the easiest path to ground. So if we're not getting a direct hit, then that electricity is not flowing through our cable and it's not flowing through our processors. So it doesn't become a big issue. And we do build in some lightning protection into the devices too, correct? We do, and we have lightning surge protection devices that we install at those processors where there's data connections or, so we're doing it on multiple layers. So the inherent principles of how it's designed and mounted to the fence, plus the surge protection that we put in there. The other, the other difference is if we lose one processor on a fence, I, I'm, I'm here to tell you if my device takes a direct hit from lightning, sure, it's, it's probably going to be damaged. But losing that one sensor on that fence doesn't mean I've lost my entire perimeter either. Um, the rest of the perimeter will stay up and operational uh, and be effective for detecting because I have other processors out there and redundant communication loops. I think that's going to go right into probably a question that Tom's going to ask you. So. Yeah, in Jeff, uh, you know, I deal a lot with the correctional market, uh, along with some other type of markets. And the question that usually comes up with us is, you know, if a cut is hap so happens on the cable, or believe it or not, somebody's out there weed whacking and kicks up a stone and damages the cable. Typically, it, the cable is cut in one way or another form. How easy or what can be done to either splice or repair that cable uh, so it's back up and operational as quick as possible? It's actually very simple, um, and I would direct everyone who has a question, there is a three-minute video I happen to narrate on our website that will train any untrained person on how to fix and repair that cable. Uh, we sell a splice kit. Uh, it's less than $150, and watch a three-minute video, and anyone can do that. Versus a fiber-based system uh, where you would need fusion splicing, special training, uh, a whole slew of things to repair that cable. Um, we Our cable is, is not... Uh, in a way, let's say our cut was bigger than just a small slice, we could take two splice kits and patch in a small section. Okay. Five minute recalibration of that area of the fence and you're back up and running. Literally, it could be a 30 minute process and your entire system's up. On top of the fact that uh, when we design our systems, we design them with a redundancy. So even if I have a cut, I haven't lost everything past there. I continue with a second data connection around so I've only lost uh, intrusion at that spot where that cut was. Jeff, thank you very much. Appreciate all your time and help.